Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. It's time to start another show. So hang around and don't go away. I'll be right back with Alice Faye. <laughs> RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. <laughs> Here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, transcribed, written by Ed James and Al Schwartz, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, John Hubbard, Janine Roos, and Whitfield, Walter Scharf and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Tonight's minor catastrophe is called Phil and Elliot Play Detective or Jessica, You're Dragging Your Net. <laughs> First, here's a word from RCA Victor. Stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Fay and Phil Harris. <laughs> All good things must come to an end, but bad things come to an end as well, which means that Phil Harris's band rehearsal is finally over. <laughs> right now, we find Phil and Elliot strolling casually up Hollywood Boulevard on what would otherwise be a very pleasant afternoon. Oh, well, a jingle bells, a jingle bells, a jingle all the way. I see by all the papers that the smog is here to stay. <laughs> a jingle bells, a jingle bells, a jingle all the way. If Santa Claus is late this year, it means he lost his way. <laughs> oh, jingle bells, a jingle bells. Hey, jingle... Curly, you know something? What? You ain't kidding about the old gent. It's getting to be that time. Yeah, you said it. This time of year is beautiful, ain't it, Al? Decorations all up and down Hollywood Boulevard. The store windows all lit up. The people all lit up. <laughs> Shame on you. That's no way to talk. Not around Christmas. No, you know what I mean, Curly. Everybody looks so happy and everything. Yeah. Just think of it, Elliot. Hmm? Another couple of weeks and we'll all be opening up our Christmas packages. Yeah, and then another couple of weeks and we'll all be opening the bills. <laughs> What's the matter with you today, Elliot? Gee whiz, what happened to your Christmas spirit? Well, it's a little early in the day. No. <laughs> no, I mean you ought to be out spreading joy. You know, buying Christmas presents and stuff like that. I already bought my Christmas presents. All of them? Yep. For everybody? Everybody. Me? <laughs> Like Curly. You know, I wouldn't forget you. Ah, oh, you, you shouldn't have done it, Elliot. <laughs> I know, but what could I do? <laughs> Say, Elliot, you didn't buy me anything like last year, did you? You'll find out. Look, I don't want any more shrunken cannibal heads. <laughs> now, you don't have to worry, Curly. I got you something real practical this year. And Alice, too. Oh, you did, huh? Yeah. Hey, what'd you get Alice? Oh, she's gonna love it. I got her a beautiful set of left-handed golf clubs. Oh, gee, she... Alice ain't left-handed. No, but I am. <laughs> Elliot, what's Well, a... she can't play all the time, and I figured maybe I could learn. Oh, Elliot, that's no way to buy Christmas presents. You gotta, you gotta put your heart into it. Like me. You know what I bought, Phyllis? The finest set of electric trains you can get. <laughs> that's what you got her last year. I know, but I broke them. <laughs> and you know what I got, little Alice? A life-size teddy bear. You wind it up, and it walks and talks Wait, wait, and wait, wait a minute, Curly. Huh? Little Alice is 14. Ain't she a little old for a teddy bear? What are you talking about? I'm older than she is, and I've got one. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't sleep without it. <laughs> well... As the old lady said when she kissed the cow. Okay, what'd she say? I don't know. Nobody ever told me. <laughs> hey, Curly, what'd you get for Big Alice? Oh, Big Alice, I haven't made up my mind yet. Of course, there's a lot of things I could get her, like a diamond necklace or, or a yacht. 
You know, stuff like that. Oh, sure. I know all about stuff like that. <laughs> but then I said to myself, I said, Phil, maybe she'd rather have something you can pay for. <laughs> that seems logical. What'd you finally pick out? Well, you suppose she'd like some lifesavers? <laughs> I don't know why, but I think she'd rather have a yacht. See what a problem I've got? Well, don't you worry. We'll figure out something. Uh, how about some bubble bath? She don't use it. Perfume? She don't use it. Soap? She don't... <laughs> <laughs> Almost got me, didn't you? <laughs> that was close. Hey, Curly, look at that. What? That pet shop. There's a whole window full of puppies. Yeah. Hey, that's it. That's what I'll get her. A puppy? Well, no, some kind of a pet. You know, something she'd love it. Something that's real cute. Something that she can hold in her lap and fondle. No. Cut it out. <laughs> you know, we've already got Little Nipper. That's the RCA dog, so we don't want no dog. But there ought to be something. How about a skunk? <laughs> Skunky, you nuts. What's no, the... I ain't nuts. A friend of mine owned a skunk, and they're cute. No trouble at all. You never have to go looking for them, either. You always know where they are. How true. Hey, hmm? look in there. Look at those puppies, Elliot. They're cute little dickenses, aren't they? Mm. Hey, look over there. Look at that big one. Where? In the middle. Hey, Elliot, get a load of those floppy ears, that long snoot, and that silly look at the... Hey, wait a minute. How come he's wearing a necktie? What? Oh, I'm sorry, Elliot. That's you. I saw that reflection in the... Yeah. Well, thanks for picking me out. Yeah. I always wondered why I had a cold nose. <laughs> hey, Elliot, come on. Let's go in there and yeah, see what okay. we can see. Okay. Are you bringing that back already? <laughs> Good afternoon, gentlemen. Can I be of service? Oh, yes, sir. I certainly hope so. You see, I want to buy my wife a pet for Christmas, and, well, I don't know quite what to give her. Hey, you're Phil Harris, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, sharp. He knows me. <laughs> he knows alligators, too. <laughs> this is quite a coincidence. Jack Benny was in this morning, and he bought a pet for Mary Livingston. Well, how about that? Old Jackson finally gave up some of his loot, huh? What'd he buy? Well, he almost bought a Dalmatian until he found out they cost $75. After you threw the ice water on him, uh, what did he buy? A white rabbit and a can of black paint. <laughs> hey, how about some goldfish, Curly? Nah, they ain't sexy enough. I like to get her something different, something uh, unusual. How about some kangaroos? <laughs> Some kangaroo. Well, you know, they got those pouches in the front, so I figured we could spot them around the ping-pong table and shoot some pool. <laughs> I'm sorry, but we don't carry kangaroos. Oh, that's too bad. I was just going to order six of them. Oh, have you thought of buying one of our feathered friends? You sell Indians? All right. Uh... <laughs> we have a large variety of birds. Oh, perhaps your wife would like a canary. no. No, I don't think so. She's like every other wife. She likes to do her own chirping. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's that? That? Oh, that's Arnold, our talking crow. A talking crow, huh? Let's hear him say something. All right, Arnold. Say something for the nice gentleman. Crowy. Crowy. Crowy, want a cracker? Ah! <laughs> He's kind of cute. You know, you could make a real pal out of this young crow. Yeah. <laughs> His old man and I have been friends for years. <laughs> Why'd you buy him, Curly? Oh, <laughs> me buy a crow? I wouldn't know what to feed him. Oh, it's very simple. All you need is a little corn. That we got. <laughs> Hey, listen to that kid. He's pretty sharp, ain't he? Hey, do you think Alice would like him? Like him? She'll love him. Ah! Well, Mr. Harris, have you decided about Arnold? Go ahead, Curly. Okay. 
I like him. I'll take him, mister. Oh, goody. Ah, that's what I like about the South. Ah, take me home. Ah. Hey, hey, listen to him. He likes me, too. Not you, Alice Faye. Wow, take me home. Take me home. Ah, ah. Okay, but you better learn to love harmony grits, too. <laughs> I want some harmony grits And some red sugar-cured ham I want a great big bowl of cream gravy And I'd be such a happy man If I can smell magnolia blossoms And azaleas in bloom Then lead me up to that table And give me lots of elbow room I want some mammy fried hoe cake And some good old black eyed peas Then give me a hay rack full of hot biscuits And make my coffee black if you please Cause if you feed me all the Dixie In that style so grand You gonna have yourself a happy man Saga molasses You're gonna have yourself a happy man mm, Pass them hominy grits And then I want some of that red-eyed ham And then give me a great big bowl of that milk gravy And you'd have such a happy man Cause when I smell magnolia blossoms and the sails in bloom, just lead me up to the table and give me lots of elbow room. I want some mammy fried hoe cake and some good old black eyed peas. Then give me a hay rack full of them biscuits and make my coffee black if you please. Cause if you feed me all a Dixie In that style so grand You're gonna have yourself a happy man Corn pone and honey You're gonna have yourself a happy man A hush puppy papa You're gonna have yourself a happy man Okay, Elliot, close the door. Why do we have to whisper? Well, Alice might be back from the market, and I don't want her to see Arnold until Christmas. Oh, oh. Where are you going to hide him, Curly? How about the garage? Alice will see him. Hey, wait a minute. I got it. Put him in the canary cage. Who, oh, me? Ah! 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 All right, all right. I see what you mean. All hey, right. Hey, honey, home. I brought the groceries. Oh, death in the afternoon. <laughs> Curly, it's Julius. Get Arnold out of sight. How? Stick him under your coat. Okay, Arnold. Now get in. Get in. And remember, no tickling. Get in. Ah! Hiya, Julius. Well, if it ain't the swallows back from Capistrano. <laughs> what do you mean, swallows? Well, don't look now, but you're molten. <laughs> what? Oh, you mean the feathers on the floor. Uh, uh we can explain that. Can't we, Curly? Oh, sure, sure. Go ahead, explain. Oh, I will. <laughs> um, uh, well, um, well, you see, Julius, there's this old Indian legend that says, says, um, when, uh, when feathers fall them from sky, um, they land them on floor. <laughs> Cut it out. Huh? Well, he, uh, he's, uh, he said he's getting stout. I don't know what he said, but his vest is flapping. <laughs> and he's flipping. <laughs> what? <coughs> Boy, it's smoky in here. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get a room. A room? You ought to get a padded cell. <laughs> I'm getting out of here, but fast. Ah, get the road, you little fink. Ah. <laughs> Hey, Arnold knows him. Yeah. 
Hey, Elliot, we still haven't found a place to hide Arnold. How about the attic? He'll be all right there until Christmas, and you can take care of him. Yeah. Hey, that's a good idea. Wait a minute, I'll get the key. Where is it? Right here in this desk drawer. Hold Arnold for a second, will you? Yes, sure. That yeah, boy, nice Arnold. Yeah, here's the key right here. I. Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? Look what I found. What? Alice's checkbook. <laughs> so that's where it lives, the little devil. <laughs> Hey, Curly, how about Arnold? Arnold, are you could have kidding? He couldn't write a check for eight dollars, Arnold. <laughs> Look at this. I'll just stick him in the closet for now, huh? Okay. Hey, Elliot, have you ever seen so many numbers? Yeah, wait till I give the bird the brush. <laughs> Be a good little crow, Arnold. <laughs> oh, that Alice. Oh, man, let me just thumb through these stubs. <laughs> Hmm, Christmas seal fund, $100. Children's hospital, $500. Ah, oh, ain't she wonderful? Keep reading, Curly. I could listen forever. <laughs> Boys Town, $300. Bananas, $75. Salvation Army. Wait a minute, Curly. What was that? Salvation Army. No, the... no, the other one. About the bananas. Oh, uh, bananas, $75. <laughs> what about? That's a lot of dough for bananas, eh? We eat a lot of bananas. That's a... <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> Community chest, $1,000. Girl Scouts of America, a hundred dollars. Bananas. Two hundred dollars. What's the matter, Curly? Another two hundred dollars for bananas. Boy, you must like bananas. <laughs> Nobody likes that many bananas. <laughs> Three days, two hundred and seventy-five dollars for. B what can you do with that many bananas? <laughs> what can you do with that many skins? <laughs> Wait a minute, here it is again. Two hundred and twenty-five. That makes five hundred dollars for bananas. <laughs> Who do you suppose Bananas is? Well, I... <laughs> That's bad English, ain't it? <laughs> Who do you... What? Not what, Curly? Who? <laughs> now, wait a minute. Hold it, Clyde. Curly, start... you know I'm the last guy in the world to suspect anybody. Oh, sure, but sure. But 500 bucks for Bananas. It's got to mean something else. Like what? Well, she wouldn't put down... $500 for Sam, would she? Who's Sam? Bananas. <laughs> Sam Bananas? <laughs> Curly, you poor guy. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> if, you, if you need a witness, you know me, pal, my right arm up to there. What do I need a witness for? Well, you're not going to let Alice get away with it, are you? With what? Sam. How do you know his name is Sam? Curly, it's obvious. Would it be Gomer Bananas? <laughs> no, I don't believe it would. Well, I don't see. <laughs> it's Sam. Elliot, you got it all wrong. A wonderful girl like Alice wouldn't do a thing like that. She wouldn't? Okay. After all the years we've been married, okay. we've got a home and two beautiful daughters, and besides, she's nuts about me. Ain't she? I said okay. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself even thinking... Uh-oh. What's the matter, Curly? Here's another 200. <laughs> For Sam? Bananas. <laughs> oh, Elliot, what am I going to do? Well, I know what I'd do. All right, now, look, let's not jump into this thing. Maybe it means something else. Phil, she wouldn't Phil, go... I'm home, and I brought you some... Phil, what are you doing with my checkbook? It's community property, you know. <laughs> well, we'll talk about it okay, later. Okay, then we'll talk about something else first. Bananas. 
But bananas? As in checkbook. <laughs> oh, that bananas. Yeah, that bananas. Who is he? Uh, no, 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 you wouldn't know him, Phil. He hangs around with another bunch. <laughs> Ooh, that was a good one, dear. <laughs> Curly, that alone is grounds for divorce. Alice, now you listen to me. Give me an explanation. Any explanation. Well, uh, I can't talk to you now, Phil. But I've got a right to know. Later, later, please. I I've got to practice my song. You mean now? Right now. Please. <laughs> Chuck chugging at the station. Choo choo train, conductor pull the cord. Choo choo train, you know our destination. All aboard. Choo choo train, chuck chugging out by Jiminy. Engineer, choo 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 choo. Smokey smoke, a puffing up the chimney. We're en route. Pour to fix the room and pour to bring some ice. Pour to get a broom, sweep out the shoes and rice. Pour to thanks a lot, you've been so very nice. Pour to tell you what, here's a quarter, shoo shoo quarter. Choo choo train, please pardon us for hiding. I'll explain in case you didn't guess. Choo choo train, it's heaven to be riding the honey, honey, on honeymoon express. Porter, fix the room And Porter, bring some ice Porter, get a broom Sweep out the shoes and rise Porter, thanks a lot Oh, you've been so very nice I tell you what, here's a quarter Shoo, shoo, Porter Choo, choo, train Please pardon us for hiding I'll explain in case you didn't guess Choo, choo, train It's heaven to be riding The Alice, now can I talk to you, please? Uh, uh, later, Phil. Uh, I've got to go down to the market. You just came from the market. I did? Well, well this is another market. Uh, give me one of those checks. What for? We're out of bananas. <laughs> hey, Curly. Did Alice ever spend any time in Hawaii? Well, I don't know. Why? She sure wiggled down that one. <laughs> oh, that was another good one, Dave. <laughs> what do you mean? She just had to go to the market. That's all. When she gets back, she'll explain the whole thing. If she gets back. What do you mean, if? Curly, how long do you suppose Mr. Bananas is going to wait? Oh, yeah. Sam, huh? Mm hmm? What did I ever do to him? Why does he want to break up my home? Now, Curly. Well, I don't care. Maybe I... it ain't too late. We got to find Sam and talk him out of it. Oh, how are we going to do that? Well, we tell him how tight Alice is with her dough, how she spends half her time in a beauty parlor, how she burns the water when she's making tea. <laughs> Curly. Yeah? You sure you want Alice back? Well, sure, I'm sure. I'm nuts about her. Even with the burned teeth. <laughs> then we gotta find Sam. Okay, let's hire a detective. Curly! And... What's the matter? You would hire a detective to follow a nice girl like Alice? Your wife? The mother of your children? For shame. <laughs> well, we gotta do something. Well, I'm... sure, but why hire a detective? We follow her ourselves. Now, wait a minute, Elliot I don't know Now, Curly, I... it's a cinch I'm an expert at this stuff After all, half of my friends Were Martin Kane Bill Gargan Lloyd Nolan Lee Tracy Mark Stevens Art Linkletter No, he's next he's... <laughs> This guy, Sam Will never know what hit him For your, your information For your information <laughs> I might do the crow Before this show's over For your information It'll be me I'm good at it Hey, Curly, there she is on the other side of the street. Pull up to the curb and we'll tail her. Yeah, 
There she goes into Cassie's beauty salon. How do you like that? She's taken my appointment. <laughs> hey, Curly, she went into the bank. Well, let's get comfortable. If she's counting her money, it'll take all day. <laughs> Curly, this may be it. Did you see where she went? Where? Sam's Fifth Avenue. That's Saks. Oh. <laughs> well, we'll wait. Curly, she went back to the bank. It figures. Curly, she went to the butcher shop. What happened to the bank? Curly, there he is. Who? Sam, see him? He and Alice are getting into that foreign car. You mean that Sam? He looks more like Gomer. Yeah, but look at that car. <laughs> that car, a yellow Jaguar. Hey, look at that car. Oh, man, that's really something, ain't it? They're closing the doors, Curly. Look at the lines on that car. Oh, that's the prettiest job I've ever seen. Sam's starting the motor. Yeah, listen to it purr. Like a baby boy. What I'd give for a car like that. Hey, Curly, he's driving away. Yeah, and man, that's a pretty car. But how about Alice? Oh, she's pretty too, but she ain't got the lines of that. Alice! Don't worry. <laughs> we'll jump in our car and catch him. <laughs> Mrs. Harris, it's a very comfortable car. Yes, it is a very comfortable car, but I just... Hey, that... Alice! Alice! Oh, it's my husband. Oh, dear. All right, Alice, pull over there. Keep going. But, Mrs. Harris... I said keep going. Faster! Alice, pull over there now. I want to talk to you. Oh, we mustn't find out. Can't you make this thing go any faster? Alice! It won't go over 35. There's a governor on it. Well, take it off! I can't. Alice, I said stop that car now. Stop it. Uh, Mrs. Harris, I don't want to get into any trouble with your husband. I got news for you. You're in trouble. All right, pull over there, will you? <laughs> Mr. Harris, you're too close. All right, shove him over, Elliot. Shove him over there, Captain. Mr. Harris, stop! 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 <laughs> Oh, this poor car. Oh, oh, I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Butterfield. I... And Mr. Butterfield, where are you? I'm up here. Okay, Sam, start talking. Sam? Don't you get away, huh, bananas? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Phil, if you'll only listen. Listen, listen, I'll listen plenty. We got some questions for Sam to answer. Yeah, what kind of mileage you get on this crate, Sam? Oh. <laughs> About 15 in town, 20 on the road. Good rubber all around. Elliot, will you stop already? <laughs> well, I just thought I'd find out. Oh, Phil, you had to spoil everything. I spoil everything. Oh, that's great. You're running around with Sam Bananas and I ain't supposed to do nothing, huh? <laughs> you ought to be ashamed. You ought to be ashamed. After all the times I've promised to go on the wagon. Just for you. <laughs> hey, Curly. We sure made a mess out of Sam's car, didn't we? Yeah, it serves him right. I ought to mess him up more than his car. It isn't his car, Phil. It's yours. Okay, then I ought to mess... What? <laughs> it's a banana-colored Jaguar, and I bought it for you for Christmas. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. It costs less than ever to enjoy your favorite music with RCA Victor's new 45 extended play records. These exciting new records bring you twice as much music, up to 15 minutes per record, for as little as $1.40. Visit your RCA Victor dealer tomorrow. Ask him to show you the Victrola 45 automatic phonographs with a famous golden throat tone system and the new Victrola 45 attachments at budget price at $16.75. Listen to them all with the economical new 45 extended play records by RCA Victor cornerstone of home entertainment for three generations. This is Phil again. Part of the thoughtfulness of Christmas giving is to be sure your gifts or cards are received on time. So wrap packages carefully and, and mail them early, huh? Thanks, and good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs> in this program transcribed were Mel Blank, Herb Butterfield, and Lee Millar. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. This has been an NBC Radio Network presentation.